In Doctrine and Covenants, section 76, um, it says, now, And now, after the many testimonies which have been given of him, this is the testimony, last of all, which we give of him, that he lives. For we saw him, even on the right hand of God, and we heard the voice bearing record that he is the only begotten of the Father, that by him and through him and of him the worlds are and were created, and the inhabitants thereof are begotten sons and daughters of God. So, this is a vision that Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon had together, um, where they saw God and they also saw a vision of the after, and it also has lots of information about the afterlife in this vision. And one of the most powerful things, beyond the fact that, um, beyond the fact that this is a powerful testimony of Jesus Christ and that we are children of God, the, um, is, it adds to one of the more powerful evidences of Joseph Smith and of the Restoration. So, one of the more powerful evidences of Joseph Smith and the Restoration are all of the people who also witnessed divine manifestations around Joseph Smith. So here we have Signe Rigdon viewing a theophany in the company of Joseph Smith. You have the three witnesses of the Book of Mormon who saw angels and were able to um, hold the gold plates that created the Book of Mormon. You have Oliver Cowdery who also saw other angels with um, John the Baptist and um, when he was ordained to the Aaronic priesthood and, and Peter, James, and John with the Melchizedek priesthood. You also have the eight witnesses who saw the gold plates. You also have some other historical witnesses for, of the golden plates, for example, like Mary Whitmer or Emma Smith, who didn't actually see the plates, but um, was able to feel them under a thin sheet and was with Joseph Smith through the translation process and strongly believed that he actually had the gold plates. And so there's a lot of people around Joseph Smith who are seeing divine manifestations. And it's not just Joseph Smith. And so that rules out most of the theories of the creation of the Book of Mormon and the restoration of the gospel where Joseph Smith is either, um, where it's all in Joseph Smith's head or Joseph Smith is trying to con people because a lot of people would have to be in on the con. Like just the people I've just barely listed um, that adds up to about 15 people or so, 15, 16 people who would all have to be on the con and who would never, and would have to take it to their deathbeds. And that's not even close to all the people who were involved in miraculous experiences during Joseph Smith's life. It would have to have been a lot more than just those 15. It'd have to include all of the people who saw divine manifestations at the dedication of the Kirtland Temple, who said that they saw angels. It would have to include the people who Joseph Smith miraculously healed. Um, it would have to include um, other people who witnessed divine manifestations. So you could argue that maybe there was a cultural thing where people were more susceptible to believing that they had experienced divine manifestations, but then you get into a uh, epistemological argument of whether or not you should trust what other people say about their own experiences. And if you do trust what other people say about their own experiences, then you should believe that these people believe that they saw God, or they saw angels, or they saw the gold plates. And so, anyways, it's one of the bit better evidences of Joseph Smith.